Hi everyone, got another quick technique for you. I was asked in an email how I get my tapes to look so real when so many tapes are just kind of flat looking. And you can see I've kind of built a layout here. I don't have my journaling yet, but I can do that after. And I have placed all my photos and my frames and I have three pieces of tape here. And this is from the Fly With Me collaboration from Valsi Designs and myself. So this was really cute and I really wanted to use it for my little Miss Bailey. And this was a canvas create we did with Dana Downley. So this seemed like a good one to show you. But you'll see I have the tapes here. So if you look closely, and we'll just zoom in on this one right here, I have an applied shadow to it, actually. It's just an outer glow. And I'll pull this over here so you can see. And it's just real light, and in fact, I may take it down even just slighter. I just want a hint of the tape being raised up and off of it, and that's okay. But the tape looks kind of flat. The frames that are around here actually in real life would be on top of each other, and there would be a little bit of, like, where you press the tape down, you'd have a little burnishing. So what we're going to use to create that kind of effect is the burn tool right here. And that's going to burnish it just beautifully for us. And I'm going to use a small um, soft brush here. And you can see that this is just, this one here is the 24 size. And I'm going to take my spacing down a little, all the way. And it's just a small brush and maybe even a tad smaller. Let's take it down to maybe... Somewhere around 1820 is what I've got it at now. Now, I could just burnish right here. But one thing that's easier is if I use my frame and I select it, you can see the frame underneath here is going to give me all of those nice, um, there's a word for that, ripply lines, but that's not the word I want. And I'm going to go back to my tape layer here. And I'm doing this command and clicking on it so it just goes right back to that layer for me and then I'm going to go back to my burn tool and I'm just going to click once here and click down again and keep doing that a couple times and I'm going to hold my shift key to get a straight line I'm going to deselect and see how it's given that here and that's kind of harsh and fake too much so I'm going to take off just maybe one time going down there. So two times kind of did it. And I could do the same over here, except this one I want to show you how, now that I have that crisp line here, I want to go slightly over to the lower level frame because that's the part that's going to be pushed downward. And I'm going to go over it just outside of where I burnished it before. And see, even one time, that gave me kind of a creased push down, whoops, push down right here. Don't click the mouse while showing you. And I'm even going to come up over here one more time. That's still too much. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to come on this side and I could again select that frame, use the move tool and then hold my command or control key and click that. So I can select that and then come back to my tape with that command control and click again. So I'm back on my tape layer, hit my burn tool, and I'm going to click down just one time, maybe two times on here. Command D or control D to deselect, and then I'm going to blend it in outside here. Just enough. And I think I'm going to take my exposure down to about a 15, and I'm going to blend one more time outward. So it has a really nice blend to it. Then you can even take this a step further and use your dodge tool. And on the top side of this, in real life, there might have been like a little crinkling or, you know, from you rubbing it, it's going to have that little bit of burnish. Take a slightly bigger, and I'm going to hit right inside where that would be. And if you zoom out here a little bit, because I'm really zoomed in there, there's about what it would look like printed. And I've over-exaggerated this a little bit so you could see it easier on the computer monitor. I probably wouldn't darken this so much as I did, 
But now it looks like I've taken that tape and I've pushed really hard on each side of this with this frame to make that tape, tape stick. And I would do the same right here. I would select this frame and command click on that layer so it selects it. And then I would command click back on my tape layer, get my burn tool, and this one, actually, I'm just going to freehand it and kind of blend it in here just a little bit. It would help if I inversed so it's on the outside of it and make it go like that. This is a little too dark, so I'm going to, or too light, sorry. So I'm going to soften that up a little bit, maybe give it a little bit, blend this in. And you kind of play with it. You just make it look like this tape has been pushed kind of hard here and on the inside of this frame too. Like I said, I'm over exaggerating a little bit here so you can get an idea what this will look like. But now you don't have that flat, flat tape looking. Let's try this on another one, and I won't exaggerate it as much this time. So we're up here, Move Tool. I'm going to select here so I can select my frame. I'm going to inverse this so it does on the outside here. And then I'm going to select my tape layer, come right around here on the outside of this. It's too much. Bring the exposure down a little bit, and I'm going to try to pass around here again, and I want to hit the inside too. And then I'm going to deselect, and I'm going to take my exposure down again, maybe just to a 5, and I'm going to blend on the inside of where I just hit just a little. Go to my Dodge tool, and then I'm going to hit right inside where this actually where it's like bending up and over the frame. And it's just sitting here and playing with it so you can get that kind of look so it looks like it's going over the tape. And when you zoom back out on the overall layout, see how that looks a lot more real. And I probably still exaggerated a little bit too much. There we go. And if you wanted to, you could give it, you know, maybe you pushed real hard here. And you could give it, I'll zoom in for you, push the tape here more. Same with over here. You're going to select your frame. And then you're going to inverse it. And then you're going to go to this tape layer. And you're going to select your burn tool again. And you're going to come right around the outside here. Just enough to make it look and blend it a little bit. And the inside right here, too. Deselect it. Blend it switch to your dodge tool and just hit the inside where that frame is where it's going to crease and that's a straight line so I'm going to do it that way and it looks like it's been pressed over there so when you zoom back out at the entire page now your tape's not flat anymore it looks like it is pressed with the frames itself and those things are up you know slightly off the paper that the tape is holding on to so you're going to get a lot more real effect and I'm going to repeat it one more time as I said I over exaggerated here a little bit so you could see it one or two swipes usually with a burn tool set anywhere between 15 and 20 depending upon the color of your tape usually will do it and then just take your opacity way down and use your dodge tool which is right here with your burn tool and just hit the top of it so that it looks like the light cast it on there and it rubbed off a little bit more. So that's your technique for today and I hope you learned something and 
something else you want to learn, just let me know in the comments below.